I bought this nice little desk lamp on the net recently and although it looks great the way it looks right now it came to me in a sorry state uh, it nearly fell apart and the electrical components inside of it were really in a sorry state as well so I had to do some restoring and some cleaning to bring it back to its former glory this is a cute little art deco lamp dating from somewhere between the 1930s and the 1940s if you'd like to find out how I restored it then please sit down and have a look at the video if you want to find out more about this kind of desk lamp then follow the links I put below the video to find out more about the interbellum art deco or Bauhaus desk lamps a while ago I bought myself a desk lamp it was advertised as 70s but I'm pretty certain they were wrong this lamp which you now see completely taken apart uh, certainly dates from the 40s if not earlier now it practically fell apart and while I was dismantling it or rather what was left of it I also pulled loose the cabling inside the stem of the lamp which is this and as you can tell the wiring was in pretty bad shape um, as was the switch by the way it doesn't seem to work for the moment so I will have to have a look at it and see what's wrong with it if I can still repair it um, all the elements of the lamp seem to indicate that it was an Art Deco lamp. The connector is Bakelite, so and it's a nice connector, by the way. So we'll need to clean that up. But the biggest problem is this: the lamp was held in place, or well, I think it would have been held in place by this rather heavy weight you see here and it would have been covered this weight by this okay so there's a small hole for the the electrical wire and the stem of of the lamp would have been connected to it via this little stub here okay so like this okay so the the stem of the light would have set or the lamp would have sat like this on the foot now I've got two problems first of all this stub here has broken off and it's really what's left of it is really too little I believe to attach it to the foot of the lamp so this and also the screw which holds the weight so this little stub here which holds the weight to it well looks a little bit like well a bit too short as well so what I actually need to do is to solder something in copper like this 
to the stub you see here okay and I need to do the same thing to the leg of the lamp you could say so either solder one here a, con uh, a screw holder right here or maybe right here okay because uh, well without it I can hardly attach it to the cover you see here why it has three holes by the way I don't know but um, the holes seem to be or to have been made in a rather clumsy way but okay well in any case um, whatever the case is I need to solder a little screw attachment or, or well something which replaces a bolt to the foot of the lamp and to the cover of the weight and that's what I'm going to try now so I'm going to try to solder something which I found in the, the do-it-yourself bolt which is a copper connector which normally is used to connect up an electrical wire but it seems solid enough to me to solder it to the stem you see there so I would place one like this oops and I would place one like this so that's exactly what I'm going to try all right, I fitted the extension, the copper extension I want to solder to the top plate of the foot and I placed it on a fireproof stone. It's quite heavy, there's a lot of iron in it, so it's a refractory stone which can resist very high heat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to preheat the piece you see here and then I'm going to smear a little bit of solder paste to it to prepare it for soldering. Once the piece is hot enough I'm going to use a special solder which contains tin and silver so no lead okay so um, I think it should work out fine if I preheat the piece sufficiently so let's start by doing that
Okay, it's hot enough. Now let's put some paste on it. There it is, soldered, a little bit oxidated, but I think I can clean that off without too much trouble. And there you have the little stub which I soldered to it. Okay, it's quite solidly soldered to it actually. I don't think it will move ever again so now what I need to find out is whether the screw will fit in so let's have a look while the foot of the stub is solidly soldered to the top of the lamps foot unfortunately the, the stub itself is a little bit weak at the top here so I need to put a few drops of solder on top of that to solidify it a little bit so that's what I'm going to try now all right same method I'm going to heat up the stub a little bit with uh, the solder lamp and when it's hot enough I'm going to put some uh, grease on it solder grease solder paste actually and then we're going to try to solder it neatly on top Refractory stones are really useful. They keep the heat in, they keep everything else from burning up, which is, in this case, a good thing. Oh, the flame went out. Okay, here we go.
next to the table I have a Pyrex bowl with water to quench the piece once it's soldered. The first stub didn't pan out, so it unfortunately it broke. So I'm going to try a second time, but this time I'm going. I placed a stainless steel screw in the stub to make it retain its shape. So same method, I'm going to heat it up first, not too much, then I'm going to put some soldering paste on top of it and then solder.
go. I think now we've got it. All right, the second time it worked out. So I had to solder the stub uh, as straight as I could to the underside of, of the cap, okay? And uh, putting in the stainless steel screw certainly did help. So now it's solidly soldered and it's reasonably straight. It's not ramrod straight, but it's more than okay. Yeah, maybe a millimeter to the left or so, but barely perceptible. Uh, the top is okay as well. Uh, there's a little bit of solder spear on the side, but I think I think I can brush that away without too much trouble uh, or at least polish it away so that shouldn't cause too much trouble so anyway this is one down one more to go okay now we're going to solder the leg and um, I attached a little copper stub well in fact the leftover of the first stub and I screwed the stainless steel screw in it and I'm going to hold it while so I'm going to pull a little bit of solder here and while it's still hot I'm going to set the stub right into the silver solder holding it by the stainless steel screw and wait until the solder sets before I release it so um, that's the plan Put a little bit of solder paste on top of it, so that should work out. Okay, there we go. Not enough. A little bit more solder. There we go. Still not enough. Okay, I think we got it. Oh yeah. 
let's quench it now. All right. Um, all the parts are cleaned and uh, ready to be reassembled. Now, what I need to do now is um, to assemble first of all the, the, the stem or the leg of the lamp to the foot of the lamp, which is uh, partially this cover here and this weight you see here okay so anyway the the leg of the lamp needs to fit through those holes you see here okay and the leg has two stubs you see a screw and a stub with treading inside and these two here have to fit in these outer holes and the center hole is for the wiring that goes to the light bulb. Now uh, you'll notice that the lower hole right here uh, down here is a little bit smaller than this stub here. So what I need to do is with my grinder carefully grind that hole round because now it's more or less irregularly shaped you know it's more like teardrop shaped than round and um, but not so much of course that it becomes really obvious but still enough so that the stub can fit inside the hole so there we go All right, I did it. Uh, I uh, ground or grinded uh, the hole so much so that it fits perfectly around the stub. So it's not too large, not too small, just right and to make a snug fit around the stub right here. Now. I don't have screws of the right length to fit into that stub so what I'll need to do is to cut one of the stainless steel screws that I am going to use to size. Now to know how long the screw should be I'm going to mark it with a alcohol pen. right? I screwed it in completely into the stub and um, I know therefore how deep it can go and okay I don't know if you can see this but the alcohol pen stops right here right here where my the thumb's nail rests okay so let me give you a little bit more light so right there that is how deep the screw goes into that stub so uh, I need to take into account a washer uh, so I my guess is the the total length of the screw should be something like this yeah so I would hazard about six or seven millimeters long so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, uh, grinder wheel uh, put it on my mini tool my mini drill and grind uh, this screw to size so I'm going to grind it about seven millimeters under the head of the screw so to start from the base of the screw here seven millimeters up all right I managed to repair the attachment of the stem of the lamp so as you can see 
um, I cut a rust free or stainless steel screw <coughs> with a plastic washer you know I couldn't find brass uh, I would have liked to find something like this yeah but I don't have any right now uh, brass washers of say five millimeters diameter inner diameter I don't have this washer would have been ideal uh, had it not been three millimeters diameter but okay we managed with a plastic washer uh, I also had to look for a nut for this screw the stub that was here uh, that was still on the stem and uh, it turned out to be um, a four millimeter screw so the inner diameter of the nut had to be four millimeter European treading yeah not imperial treading so uh, yeah and where the nut went I don't know no clue uh, but in any case, uh, I, I always try to use stainless steel or brass to repair something, you know, just uh, to uh, prevent any corrosion, you know, rust. Okay, so that is fixed. Uh, we still need to tread wires through this opening here to the top of the stem, but we'll do that in a moment. Um, what I also did was um, I uh, repaired, if that's the word for it, the uh, connector. So this is the original connector that c came with the lamp. It's Bakelite. You know, it has that, that nice Bakelite pattern uh, in its body. I, I really like it. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that a chip broke off, off of one side here. But, okay, well, it's the connector that came with the lamp, so that's a good thing. Now, the pins of the connector were just screwed in. Yeah, but the body of the connector was completely open so I had to cut a small cover to cover up the the insides of the connector and it turns out that uh, using uh, let me see using the magnetic strip of of uh, uh, a credit an old credit card uh, is perfect it's uh, brownish black in color uh, and uh, well it 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 uh, it fits perfectly inside the connector so uh, there you go that's also what I did uh, and then I also had to repair the uh, fitting, you know, for the light bulb. Yeah, um, especially the center of the socket. Okay, so the the socket had still its contact for the center pin, but somehow, somewhere along the way the center screw for the socket uh, was lost and well point in fact this was dangling uh, around and and uh, somehow was fortunately not lost so I had to replace that as well that turns out to be a two millimeter screw so again I used the stainless steel round head screw and I fitted a small four millimeter nut at the bottom and uh, that will do nicely okay so yeah well so 
I, I just lightly cleaned the socket really the, the, the socket holder housing as it were uh, because I don't want to lose the, the patina on the metal it's not really dirty it's just uh, oxidation which you see here it's brass and the inside is really rather clean but the outside is well oxidated but no matter I like it so what's the next thing to do okay I'm getting ready to pull a 18 gauge wire through this opening here and for that I'm using a 20 gauge a single 20 gauge wire which I uh, push rather easily through the stem of the lamp and I soldered it to the 18 gauge you know I soldered them together and then I soldered them to the 22 gauge wire so what I'm going to try now is to pull the whole thing through by pulling gently on the 22 gauge so let's see whether this will pan out because it's not so easy as it looks you know because it gets stuck and it's it's really harder than you think you know and well okay let me wrestle with it for a minute and I'll show you progress. Okay, bit by bit it's coming along. It's, oh well, centimeter by centimeter. Uh, it, I really need to do it slowly, really slowly, but it's moving along. Okay, it took some elbow grease and uh, and a little bit of uh, WD-40 uh, lubricant, but there it is, out from the top and from the bottom. So yeah, I succeeded in uh, pulling it through. Uh, but it's not something I would do every day, let me tell you. And funnily enough, uh, I managed to pull it through, but it really depends on how you hold the cable and, and on, on how you pull on the cable and all that. So it's really a very fiddly thing. Okay, so anyway, the cable is true, so now let's see whether we can attach the top part of the lamp all right this is the light or the lamp as it is at this moment it's not finished yet uh, i still need to build in a switching mechanism and then of course I need to test it and to give it a yet another thorough cleaning but well this is how it is supposed to have looked once reassembled okay and this is not what I got when I bought it okay it, it was in in three different parts and uh, it, it looked really beaten up and dirty so uh, let's get on with it I disassembled the switch uh, of the light because it didn't work now you see the all the parts that make that one switch and the interesting part of the switch is actually the thing that makes contact itself i don't know if you can see this but it's really really tiny 
I'm going to take some tweezers to grab it because it's it's so tiny. So as you can tell, it has a spiral shape. Okay, and so the central part of this copper thing um, is also spiral shaped. Yeah, I know it's hard to see, but trust me, it too is twisted. Now, originally around that central part was this spring, like so. Okay. So that's how it sat in the switch. And on top of that part, there was the button itself. And the button... has a slot in it uh, you I think you can just about see the slot okay now this the neck of, of this little copper contact uh, fits just inside the slot and between the push pin and the contact rotor let's say there is the spring here. Now, by rotary action within the neck of the button, um, the switch goes on and off, you know. By this little springy thing, the rotor, switching between two copper contacts like this, and like this, so open, closed okay and it, it's pretty much the same action you get from some cheap ball pen uh, you can get on the market you know when you push on a button and you hear that rattling click 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 noise well it's the same principle now I don't know why it stopped working but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it all out uh, with some contact cleaner then I'm going to use a tiny little bit really a drop or so of WD-40 and then I'm going to reassemble it uh, with tiny pop rivets I think and uh, then we're going to give it a try whether it still works or not Okay, here is another top trick. You see this ring here? This ring is normally what screws onto the neck of the switch to hold it in place. Now, the ring was split, as you can tell here. Now, I'm going to glue the both halves of it back together with a tiny drop of super glue. Now, you can imagine that holding a small part like this in my fingers while I'm dripping super glue on it isn't really a wise thing to do so this is a trick you slide it onto something which has a neck which gets wider as you go down the neck so this screwdriver has exactly the right kind of neck I need it widens as I go to the top of the screwdriver and it has a diameter a starting diameter smaller than the inner diameter of the ring so you slide it over gently and then you widen the gap a little bit not too much mind you or you might crack it but just enough to drip a tiny drop of super glue in it like this there you go you wait for a few seconds and then you slide the ring back off again like this there you go And this way, you never get fingers stuck to something glued with super glue. 
Okay, let's reassemble the switch. So I reinserted the two little contact box, the brass contact box you see here. Okay, and then what I did was I gently pinched the two arms of the rotor together and I squeezed it in between the two contacts, like you see right now. Okay. So the next thing to do, preferably with tweezers, since my fingers are way too big, I reinsert the spring on top like this. <coughs> and then what I do is I put the top of the push button back into its sleeve like this okay you just slide it in and you see the the sleeve has roughly the same shape as the the buttons form okay so what I need to do now is I need to compress and actually I think it will be easier like this I need to slide that little opening in the button you see here I don't know if you can see it yeah the little slot needs to go on top of that little springy thingy here without it exploding in my face so to speak so here we go I need to compress the spring a bit and already you can tell it's not going to be easy okay there we go so I insert voila like that the button but I need to keep my finger on top of it because otherwise it's going to jump away from me there you go slid it back into its sleeve and it's reassembled okay so Let's see if it works now. Hmm, not really, not yet. Okay, so I need to investigate why it doesn't work. Well, there you go. It's all connected up the way it must have been so many years ago. So. What I'm going to do now is to close it up with the weight here yeah, and uh, screw it tight and then see whether it switches on or off. Well, the lamp is in the AC, plugged in into the AC. Well, let's see whether it switches on or not. So here it goes. Oh yeah, it does. There you go. That's how it looks underneath. Okay and there's the switch I repaired it uh, it's not perfect yet it it's still a little bit well reluctant to work you know but it does switch off you know but then I have to pull it out like this you know and then when I push again it switches on and returns practically of its own accord but yeah it's not perfect uh, 
why I don't know yet uh, when I have a bit more time I'm going to investigate what what could be wrong with it uh, but okay it works you know um, and and it's the authentic original switch you know and that's why I mounted it back yeah, because, well, normally, you know, I would replace a switch like this. But it's an, it's the switch that came with the lamp, you know. And it is, period, the switch. So, uh, it, it, it fits the lamp perfectly. And, oh yeah, I mounted back the weight at the bottom. Okay. So, there you go. All that repairing and all that cleaning for a very nice Art Deco period lamp. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode or this video of restoring a Art Deco lamp. Good night guys.